Welcome to the CES and the booth of Mercedes-Benz here 2020. Why am I surrounded with pictures of the movie Avatar and what is the name AVTR about? And how will mobility look in the far future? We're going to find out today. What really uh, unites us uh, is the quest to push the boundaries of technology. Uh, Lightstorm, his company, has always been about, you know, how do you get to the next technological edge of filmmaking, which is what we're trying to do in the car business, the inner unrest for what's next, always pushing beyond, always thinking about uh, what the next great thing is, and letting your energy, your fantasy, uh, your creativity work for you. But that's not the only thing. It's also about sustainability. Uh, that's what the Avatar movie is about. It's a message uh, to bring harmony between man and nature, and that's also what we want to do with our sustainable business model, make sure that mobility in the future has zero impact on nature. So next to me now is Gordon Wagner, Chief Design Officer of Mercedes. Um, Gordon, I have a question. When we talk about that concept car here, the future of the mobility, um, how interesting is it to do, to create something like it? And how was the, yeah, the cooperation with Avatar or being inspired by this? Yeah, I think for us it's a dream come true designing a car that is inspired by a fantasy or sci-fi movie like Avatar. And uh, I think the result is something super futuristic that brings our design philosophy of central purity to an entirely new level um, that picks up of many sustainable ideas, whether it's the overall shape that is efficient and in harmony looking, whether it's materials, recycled materials in the interior, and most of all, uh, the interaction system that, that merges car and driver into one living organism and that can actually transform you from planet Earth to planet Pandora. So there's so many revolutionary ideas. If you look at these flaps there, they mimic uh, the raising of, of animals' hair when they move or getting excited. And so this car can communicate with you as it's a living organism. And so there's so many revolutionary stuff here that makes that a very, very special concept car. The design language of this concept, of course, is yeah, extremely modern, far into the future. But when you look at the front of the car, I will instantly, instantly recognize this is part of the EQ family. And this is because of the shapes of the colors of the car. But on the other hand, when I look at this small star and this big um, surface at the front, that reminds me of the super sports cars of Mercedes out of the 70s and, and 80s. And so you do find both in that car, which one is the heritage and the other one is the far future. A very important thing with this study here is to get an idea of how the user experience of the interior of the car will be in the future. And this is something I'm going to get explained by an expert now. Well, first of all, when we get into this car in the interior of the Vision AVTR, what is most apparent is that all the traditional user interface elements have disappeared. We no longer have traditional displays or buttons. Everything has merged and is seamless. It's one with the interior. The concept is fully autonomous. We therefore no longer have a steering wheel, but instead have this merge control, with which we can then start to influence autonomous driving, but don't necessarily need to control every single detail of the car going through the environment. We have three different modes. First off, there's the driving, which is mostly autonomous or with more manual intervention when we want it. While we're driving through the environment, we can see that on this large screen up front, which helps us to explore and understand the environments in more detail. The car thereby also shows us additional augmented content, which we might not be able to see. Secondly, we can explore different points of interest in our surroundings in more detail, almost making like a drone flight around them. And thirdly, our entertainment features. In this case, jumping into the world of Avatar. A very important concept is how to yeah, interact with the car. And they use a projection on your hand. And you can just by closing your hand, you can choose something. You can swap by just yeah, going from one to the other symbol. And this is really interesting. And what I really do like is whenever you have an interaction here, you will feel it in the seats. You get yeah, something physical back. Uh, if this works in the future for everybody, we will find out later. This concept car, AVTR, of course, is a study, so it's nothing real, and it is something you may see in the far, far future. But important for me is to know what you have to do, what, yeah, what rules you have to follow to create the future of mobility. And about this, I'm now talking uh, to the head of the development department of Mercedes. 
when we talk about Mercedes-Benz and the future of Mercedes-Benz cars, or let's say the future of mobility, how will this look like and what are the big poles you have to yeah, be focused on? Well, we are redefining actually the R&D strategy of the company to take on the challenges uh, that we're facing at the moment. But let me start first with the emotional product lead, which is our first pillar. So the product has to be emotional outside, inside interior, but also uh, in its services. A second pillar is innovation. That's in our DNA, that's in our genes. We are the inventor of the automobile and that's going to take us into the future. The third important pillar is sustainability. So it's about zero emission, it's about uh, resource conservation and uh, that's going to take us into the future. The fourth pillar is digitalization. Uh, the cars of today at Mercedes, they are created in a digital world. So this saves time, so we are faster to markets and we are creating also digital products beside the nice physical product that we see here. And the fifth pillar is excellence. And uh, I think that's also part of the DNA of Mercedes to have excellence in what we do and what we deliver. So for us, it's a holistic approach. So uh, it's CO2 reduction, uh, it's CO2 neutrality in 2039. That's our ambition, uh, 2039. It's emission-free cars in the future and it's resource conservation, using a minimum of resources out of the earth uh, into our products and have a full recycling process in the kind of a circular economy available in the ultimate stage. Uh, we talk Talking about the future of mobility and in this case electric mobility, the battery is the core thing you have to talk about. And when you think about batteries today, people don't like them so much because yeah, they are not, let's say, environmentally friendly. Um, but you have to know that today um, the companies can recycle about 95% of the battery already and very important is that the battery will completely change. So uh, about 2025 they say the battery costs will be about a fifth of what you pay today and um, on the other hand the capacity will increase massively. Uh, but I think more important is that the target is to really get rid of all the um, things they use today, like these special metals uh, for batteries like cobalt, nickel and all this stuff, and they're going to replace this. And so the battery is going to get more environmental friendly. And another thing is when you look at the, how the battery is built, we have um, liquids at the moment in the battery, which are flammable, which are toxic. And that means that you have every single cell has to be uh, completely sealed. And if you look about the whole battery package, it needs to be sealed as well. And it needs to be very, yeah, very strong. Um, if you have an accident, nothing will happen. And if you change this so you will not have any liquids anymore, it means you can do everything a lot more smaller and a lot more lighter. And that is a very important step to get, yeah, with the same size of a battery, a lot more of capacity. And the far thing they're going to look at is the future in about 20 years. Then batteries will be completely organic. And that means that you can not only recycle a battery, then your battery is just organic waste. Very important is... If we talk about the future, we talk about sustainability. And this is what you find inside of the concept car everywhere. So for instance, have a look here. This is a surface which is, touches a bit like soft leather. You will find this inside the car, but this is um, recycled plastic. So really something interesting that touches, yeah, like really leather. And when you look here, you do find something that looks a bit like, yeah, a very, very expensive piece of wood, but it is a liane. And this is something you can just, yeah, climb, just pick up, in the um, rainforest and so you make you clean up the forest to be honest and you will have this as an end product so something very interesting and here you can see the plant you look here this is a fabric something yeah quite soft quite smooth and easy and this is made out of plastic bottles a completely recycled material and this is what you find as the cover of the front seat at their rear side so recycling everywhere One good example for the being inspired by the movie Avatar are these 33 flaps here at the rear of the car, which are, yeah, I was inspired by the uh, animals in the movie. And interesting with these flaps is they can not only move to completely change the aerodynamics of the car, they are also illuminated, which then means they can transport information from the car to the outside. Like, for instance, they can tell you if you drive behind what is the mood of the driver. Will the car turn left or right? Will it make change lane? Will it accelerate or decelerate? So that really is something where the car gets a life.
Looking at the interior of the car, you can really see how it was inspired by the movie Avatar. Because when you look at the shape of the seats, they were yeah, inspired by the shape of the hammock, so where the people slept in the movie. And when you look here at the rear seats, the shape goes around and yeah, closes at the top. So that gives you something like a crew car, something really cozy, very nice, something where you feel safe. So for your kids, when they sit on the rear seats, for instance. Um, when you look, um, what I think very interesting is, at the center console, I think you can see it up here a bit, more, a bit better. So the, the shape from the center console going into the dashboard, very soft and smooth, this is something that was inspired by the trees. So you have the trunk and then you go into the branches, something a very smooth and soft thing, which we already know. So we're used to that kind of shape and this is something why it works so beautifully here. And what I really do like is if you really talk about being inspired and let the nature work, you do find this here. It goes from the um, center console over the dashboard into the A-pillar. So this is one shape. And um, even the engineer said, it looks, the 3D picture looks a bit like, eh, this couldn't work, but when they built the car, you see it is working. The concept AV2R here at the booth of Mercedes at the CAS in Las Vegas really is a look into the far future of mobility. What I really do like with the car is that you can really see and feel how much inspiration the Mercedes guys received from the movie Avatar. Uh, but on the other hand, to be yeah, honest, is that car really gives you a look into the far future and I'm not quite sure how much of this concept will really come into production, but we may find out this in the future.